Many people have claimed to hear radio stations over things such as their telephone landline, metal door screens, fences, mattress springs, wire clotheslines, window blinds and house wiring. Then there's earrings, televisions, baby monitors, toilet seats, glasses frames, you name it. Perhaps most notably, there's also dental fillings. Is there any truth in this? Well, yes and no. My research into these stories began with an interesting instance from 1960. I should point out here that I'm not an expert, just an enthusiast, so I hope my basic explanation on the theories behind these phenomena makes sense. Brian Senior, a 20-year-old from Doncaster, became local news with his story of a talking electric guitar. The instrument picked up Radio Moscow and the chime of Big Ben, signals from Australia, as well as local police and fire calls. A post office engineer went to Brian's home in Windmill Bank Lane, near Doncaster. He thought the trouble lay in the pickup behind the strings and offered a solution, take the guitar to pieces and examine it bit by bit. Brian refused and was then warned he may be breaking the law every time he played the guitar at local pubs and clubs. The engineer told him, you're probably committing an offence playing police and fire calls and also rebroadcasting BBC programmes when you play the guitar at local youth club dances. Brian made a promise not to let it talk in public and switch it off as soon as it started broadcasting at dances. The post office accepted his promise. A GPO radio interference department official in Doncaster said, We heard about this strange guitar and decided to investigate, believing we could help stop the radio interference. We're still interested in the guitar, but only out of curiosity. He admitted the guitar Brian bought on HP would probably be ruined if it were taken to pieces. So, this matter was never really solved. It would appear that some sort of wiring anomaly in the guitar was picking up local transmissions, and the guitar's amplifier was making them audible. It's quite possible that the amplifier itself was doing all the work, but without more information on this lost story, it's hard to say. A primitive crystal radio has no batteries, but can pick up radio signals through a grounded wire antenna. This works by allowing electricity to flow through the radio in one direction and not the other. Let's look at this principle applied to claims that wire fences could pick up radio stations. The first receivers used a long wire antenna and a crystal which functioned as a diode to extract the audio and play it through a crystal headphone. This was called a cat's whisker because it used a coiled wire pressing up against the crystal. The coil would tune to the radio station and moving the coil up and down adjusted the frequency. When the links or other wire components of a fence touch together, they can function as a diode in a cat's whisker to demodulate the audio from a nearby radio signal. The same principle, it's alleged, can cause braces or loose fillings to vibrate in sync with music on the radio. If the signal's strong enough, and I guess most of the cases we're going to cover soon involve the person being extremely close to a high-powered signal source, it's claimed that you may hear the song. There's a widely reported case, again from the 1970s, which claimed that a university student received CFRA on 580kHz on her dental braces. Stories of metallic dental work picking up radio signals have been widely reported over the years. A story claims that in 1961, a 12-year-old Chicago boy had a missing front tooth replaced with a cap held in place with a brass wire. Soon after, he began hearing music in his head when he was outside. He never heard an announcer or any other cues to identify the radio station. The phenomena stopped a year or so later when another dentist fitted him with a cap that had no wire attachments. In 1947, a woman in Chicago heard radio signals for about 10 minutes while she rode a train from Cleveland to Rhode Island. She heard commercials and an announcer's voice, but not clearly enough to identify the station. She did have silver tooth fillings, but could not recall if any of them had been placed prior to her trip. A story from March 1970 claimed that a Daytona Beach woman had been receiving music through her dental fillings and crowns for two weeks. She was sitting with her family in her living room when an orchestra began blaring It's a Long Way to Tipperary. The woman, who remained anonymous, asked one of her children to turn off the radio. He replied that it was off, but the music continued. She went to the dentist, who explained that two metals such as gold and amalgam fillings, plus acid in saliva, could set up a potential receiving system. The dentist replaced the gold crowns and told her to use baking soda to cut down on acidity. The sound was now only half as loud as before. In order to rest, the woman slept in a motel a mile away from her home and out of range of the signal. 
Electronics experts claim that the signal was coming from someone playing a gramophone and transmitting sound to a speaker in another part of their house, but the signal was travelling as far as a mile. Perhaps the most infamous story came out in 1974, when Lucille Ball told TV host Dick Cavett that during World War II, she picked up radio broadcasts through her dental fillings as she was driving home from the MGM studios through Goldwater Canyon. She had to have dental work done in the early 1940s, and the dentist put temporary fillings in, which at the time were made of lead. She had several temporary fillings put in her upper and lower jaw. When it happened again a week later, she told MGM security because the signal seemed to be in Morse code. The next day at the studio, she mentioned her experience to Buster Keaton, who was able to figure out that she was driving by a 50,000 watt radio tower in Goldwater Canyon and told her she was picking up a radio station in her fillings. The signal got stronger and stronger as she drove past some vacant lots a few nights later. She stopped once the signal was so strong, her whole jaw was vibrating, she said. Ball claims that the security office passed the information to the FBI, who found a Japanese underground radio transmitting station. There's a story you once told, and uh, I'll, it had to do with World War II. And oh, you were I once... know. I know the one about the dentist. Yes. I had some dental work to be done. You know, they put in temporary fillings. And all of a sudden, I heard music. And I turned, looked down to turn off my radio, and it wasn't on. And the music was getting louder and louder and louder, and I realized it was in my mouth. And I couldn't wait to get back to MGM the next morning and tell the security office, and they found an underground Japanese transmitting, transmitting radio, station. radio station. Honest to God. That is, in, is that a great story? Now, this story has been widely debunked, and it gets very deep, so I'll just give you the top line. There's evidence of Japanese spy rings that were uncovered in Southern California during World War II. The problem is that Lucille Ball's story doesn't quite fit the timeline. She claimed this incident took place while she was working on the film Du Barry Was a Lady, which, while released in 1943, was filmed in 1942. There's no record of Japanese spy rings being uncovered in 1942. There's also the fact that she waited until 1974 to tell this story publicly. So, is it possible to pick up radio signals in fillings? A person's mouth could function as a receiver and their body act as an antenna. Any length conductor relative to wavelength is capable of being an antenna. So, in these cases, the antenna is the human body and the filling is the diode rectifier. A metal filling can function as a semiconductor that detects the audio signal and the speaker could be something in the mouth that vibrates enough to produce noise, like a loose filling. Some experts have claimed that when the metal of a filling makes contact with saliva, it forms a miniature semiconductor. As for hearing the signal, audio speakers generate quick vibrations, correlating with the sound waves of a song on a radio signal. It's been suggested that Lucille Ball was driving down a bumpy road, and that the speed of her car created vibrations in her loose fillings, which caused her to hear the signal in her head. Mythbusters tested the teeth radio myth relating to the story about Lucille Ball, but found it to be false, concluding that modern dental fillings cannot create a working radio receiver. While the phenomenon of hearing AM radio signals with dental work is theoretically possible, if a crude semiconductor junction is formed, Mythbusters and other experts found that necessary conditions such as specific galvanic cell reaction between dissimilar metals like silver fillings and saliva are not reliably present in the mouth with modern dentistry, making it an exceedingly rare event. Many scientific and dental experts have gone on the record saying that they too doubt the validity of these claims, but it's never stopped the stories. Another story from 1995 claimed that pop music filled a British woman's head for more than a year and drove her to despair. It claimed that a Cheshire woman in her mid-30s had seen her doctor and a psychiatrist before a dentist identified the root of the problem. The dentist turned the music off, so to speak, by replacing her metal fillings with resin. He claimed that it could be connected with the fact that she lived near some electricity pylons or that a nearby neighbour had powerful hi-fi equipment in his home. While the experts can't seem to agree on the dental filling theory, hearing radio signals in other metalwork around the home is more plausible. It's been widely reported that when WLW launched, the 500 kilowatt station caused people to hear presenters' voices in metalwork throughout their homes, including their mattress springs and pipework. Radio waves will induce a current through any conductor. The current is usually small, and so unless there's a circuit to receive and amplify it, it'll go unnoticed. However, if you're very close to a powerful transmitter field, the current can be strong enough to make conductors vibrate or oscillate at whatever frequency that field's on. 
This is basically how a crystal radio works as I described earlier. If those conductors are attached to a flat rigid surface, they can vibrate as well and produce sound. Another common instance was hearing radio stations on a kitchen tap. The tap and attached copper pipe form an antenna. A strong enough signal could induce vibrations in the pipe, and finally the bowl shape of the sink can amplify vibrations making them audible. The sink forms a primitive speaker, and the sink and pipe work essentially form a poor receiver. So that's my very primitive explanation on extremely primitive receivers. I'm open minded to the dental filling phenomenon. Thousands of people have corroborated the story despite the Mythbusters debunk and input from specialists. Let us know in the comments what devices and objects you've heard radio signals through.